this blue always been up there? <laughs> I just now noticed it. It looks bigger. What are you fucking talking about, man? It's a splitter, dude. <laughs> Come on, man, mate. I don't know. It's interesting. It's an old building. Why haven't they get there, you know? You know, rock fall on it? <laughs> just by time, wind, some rain, wood expands and then contracts. I don't. Fucking care. <laughs> Can we just, really, weren't we just talking about how attractive Marianne was? And now you're talking about splinters. Let's get back to talking about titties then. <laughs> Come on then. Don't you ever get tired of talking about titties? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, let me think about that. No, I don't get tired of talking about titties. You're mean, ain't it? <laughs> Let's continue then. <laughs> so anyway, uh, last night, and they're walking away. <laughs> last night, when I was talking to Marion, no. she <laughs> leant over, oh, and I saw a bit of collarbone, yeah? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and they keep walking around. <laughs> oh, oh, my Lord. goodness. <clears throat> I'll peer over, and I'll be like, I'll breathe. Ha! <laughs> 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 yeah. 40-foot ha! How about now? <laughs> yes, please, throw it down. Luckily. Did you hear that? He saw a collarbone. <laughs> Young lads, I miss being like that. I don't remember being like that. Oh, are you gay? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Do you not like collarbones, then? I just haven't had the chance, the time. Are you a virgin? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Mum's the word. I will tell no one. I frankly don't care. I'm gonna start climbing the rock. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear Humphrey. Imagine. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> but Humphrey gets up. Oh my god, no one saw that. <laughs> what? Um, you do well. What was the point? <laughs> We're hoping no one sees any of this. I can't see you now. <laughs> but I climbed with such grace, and yet, you did not witness it. No, but through logical deduction, I can understand that you made it up. I'll tell everybody that you had wings of the gods. I don't care about your words. I care about you seeing it. Well, we'll have you climb something when we, t tomorrow or something. What if I'm not feeling as good? <laughs> what if it's an off day? What if I have a wedgie? Then I get to see you fall on your back or something. Oh, <laughs> God, you wish to watch me be embarrassed. Let's continue. God, I love him. So <sighs> Let us go, then. Is this one? Okay, so on the sloped roof, do we see the windows? Oh, yeah. Fabian! Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> so. <clears throat> you try and whisper to her. Okay. <clears throat> Can you polymorph? Nod or shake. So one of the guards just looking at you. <clears throat> okay. So you guys sit there for a bit, and as you wait. You're going to hear the heavy footfall of chainmail armor coming from behind you. Turning to look, you yeah. see a large person carrying a hefty axe shrouded by a black cloth that is, that is secured around their forehead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> their arms are beefy. Though they only stand about five foot four from the ground, the axe stretching about a foot above them. Chainmail dangles from their chest and their breathing is heavy. An executioner. Mm -hmm. As the executioner reveals themselves, you hear the crowd readjust, mm -hmm. and you turn your attention to the entrance of the town hall, where you see the mayor walking out in a billowing black dress accented by a corset, cinched underneath with various bits of jewelry dangling from her ears and clinging to her fingers. She walks up to the top stair, looking solemnly before she speaks. Today, the town has suffered a great loss. Not the gate, the roads, nor the stone upon the walls. For those can be rebuilt. No, 
this was something needlessly taken, as they have been taken far too frequently in the past. We have lost the life of a human friend. No, Stephen. Stephen Dandas. No. A city watch guard who had been working overtime to cover for his friend while he was sick. He had lived alone in his home, though he entered the hearts of us all as we took strolls out of the city. Seeing his smile light up the pathway to our journey out yonder, he sacrificed his time for his fellow guardsmen's well-being, and then he sacrificed his life for all of ours. With the help of these fine men and women, jesters to all of you, beckoning you all to approach as he does so. You walk up. So, um, um, we'd be walking up. I'm asking you first, are you walking up? Mm-hmm. Sure. I'll ask you what you're doing as you walk up afterwards. I don't, I, I, um, what are we walking up on to? You're walking up to the, uh, again, you're walking up to like the top <laughs> stair that leads up to the town hall. Remember, it's a very elongated stair that's only about six steps. Yeah. She's on top of She's it in the center. Where's the executioner? Right next to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> but he's not being beckoned up as well. Right, it's just us. Mm -hmm. You walking up? Walking up. Okay, as you walk up. No! <laughs> no! No! You see a snide-looking man walk out of the town hall, a long coat trailing from behind him, and a poofed-out ascot just below his soul-patch-laden chin and thin-topped hair. You see Zeta Taxinos what walk out. What the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> the, the mayor, he walks right up next to you, mm -hmm. bumping up to Osiren, walking with you up to the mayor, towards the mayor. Thanks to these men and women, the heroes of the shield, the crowd <gasps> cheers mm -hmm. outwards throughout the entire city. No more were allowed to fall, and the city of Betuis was kept safe from those who wish nothing but sadness and despair. Zed will whisper to all of you, behave yourselves, he is watching. Ooh. And he points up to the sky <laughs> to seemingly nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Zed then steps up. You all three notice he's hiding a bit of a limp. <laughs> and he wipes a bit of blood mm -hmm. off from his nose as he walks up. <sighs> Hello! My name is Zed. Zed Ataxinos. <sighs> All of you have heard, I'm sure, stories of what has happened. Needless violence. Committed by whom, you may ask? Who is responsible for such heinous acts of violence? Who cares so little for the lives of humans, dwarves, halflings, gnomes, Leonin, Goliaths, and half-elves that they would assail such a wonderful city as ours? Murder those so dear to us and corrupt our lives with such sorrow? Well, is it not obvious? It is none other, he points past all of you. You look back to see the executioner now walking up with two guards. The guards pushing forward with two high elven soldiers you saw previously. Extremely badly beaten and barely conscious wearing their mithril armor. As they're... <laughs> it is none other than those who profess to safeguard life. When exactly was it that the high elves protected any of you? In fact, who was it that died protecting all of you just this night? Was it the guardians of life? No! But lo, it was Stephen. And was he not human? Yes, it was. And was it none other than the high elven menace that forced his hand, forced his soul to slip away out of all of our grasp, but never from our mind? But, you may ask, why did the High Elves do what they did? It is simple. 
their queen is dead. The crowd <gasps> gasps in unison, many furrowing their brows and covering their mouths in shock. Yes, the queen is dead. The same queen who refused to help the dwarves after suffering a deadly blow by rogue mages in their capital of Kernulem, yet sent armies in response to a single high of dying in Kretilar. The queen who allows the slow starvation of the forest of Amdaron. The queen who has let the Dragon King enslave all those with Adamos. I speak not in riddles or hyperbole, for it is not only humanity that has suffered underneath the Dragon King's rule. We are all aware of such things. At this very moment, we all bear the full weight of his hatred, for he has begun to exterminate any who live within the South. The crowd gasps once more, some decrying the man. Others beginning to tear up. Others appear to be getting angry. Perhaps not at the man speaking. Yes, I speak truly, for I have seen it firsthand. I come from a town by the name of Dunborough, as is my family and my two daughters. And these things too. We sat in our homes. And as I read fantastical tales of times far better to my daughters, I heard the sound of gargantuan wings approaching. Looking out of my paltry window, I saw the first waves of blue lightning begin to obliterate my town. I saw the mists of blood rise within the burnt oxygen of the streets. The stone of the old buildings melt, and the tower of the river judge turned to ash before my very eyes. I tried to warn my family of the onslaught, but the assault was far too swift, and the lower portion of my home was toppled to the ground. I awoke many hours after the stone had hit my head, knocking me unconscious only to find my family. <sighs> you see the mayor place a hand on his right shoulder. Sorry, it is too sorry. I vowed to take vengeance not only for my family, but all those who lost in such wanton destruction. I traveled the Betuis for refuge, hearing of the Queen's passing as I traveled, feeling no empathy after witnessing my family murdered by a tyrant of her making, but feeling fear for what repercussions may follow. Lo and behold, once the news reached the lips of those within the south, the king's rage extended further, destroying the town of Hindalas next, slaughtering more humans in his wake. I thought for a moment at least that I could be safe here. But there is a never-ending hatred for us all, an inescapable ire cast upon us by those in power. All of us, not just humanity, but dwarves as well, halflings, gnomes, and half-elves. But we are pitted against one another, are we not? And for what? So the elves can wear such fancy garments, don the armor of the dwarven people, harness the technology of the gnomes, and eat heartily of the culinary treats of the halflings. All the while, none of us feel any sense of happiness. None of us feel the tenderness of a relationship between the species. And all the while, we are blinded to the real enemy until they murder us in their cities and claiming themselves justified later. I need not lecture you further, for it is so painfully obvious you are all of you knowing of these transgressions. Though much like me, you chose to ignore them for the mere hope that one day it would all be better. However, I tell you this now, while they hold power, while they extend their arms into the lives of all those around them, while they exist, we are unable to. But no longer will we take this lying down. No longer will we spew hatred at one another for their sake. No longer will we be slaves, being murderous for their sick gains. 
for we wish to see justice finally be done. For Bahamut has dealt us none, has he not? And they all sit silently. You hear weeping within. One of the dwarves sits up. Boy, you there, and they all. You mugged me. You mugged me. And another person steps up. Oh. It ain't never done nothing for my family. Another one comes up, one that you saw in the inn. Mm. I remember that red fellow who's sitting up right next to you, one of the saviors of our town. He looked pretty beat up. And I heard my friends say that you walked out of an alley with him. The high elf spits <laughs> on the dwarf. Good shit. Zed. So will justice finally be done? Yes! As most of the crowd rises in anger, the mayor smirks slightly. Bring them forth! The elves are thrown on the ground. And the executioner walks up near all of you. The mayor steps up once more as Zed squeezes in between all of you. you smell a sweet cologne permeating his person. sits and watches. The executioner wastes no time <laughs> gripping the halberd <laughs> by its edge <clears throat> and putting it firmly upon his shoulder. The mayor, we need hear no last words from these two vile insects who attacked our city so heinously. I care not who your leaders were or why they were slain. I care that Stephen is dead at your hands. She ste steps back to the first. As the axe goes through the head, rolling down, the dwarf picks it up, screaming out into the crowd as the executioner pulls it back one more time, echoing throughout. As another high elven head rolls down the steps, you hear the rage build. You stand there for many minutes. The mayor comes up to you. Looks like you are allies of my friend after all. And walks back into the town hall. Zed sits there for a bit. forward to seeing you later, all of you, and so does he. Sorry about your uh, watch. It's all right. I can afford a new one. <laughs> he walks away. 